Ratna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang, and this is episode 14, Dreams and Visions of the Last Harvest. It's pretty much uh, the dreams and visions that I've had, or the words that were given to me from the Lord, regarding everything that I've uh, encountered in my journals on the Telegram site that I've written about uh, within these past few years. And I'm going to be going over a few of them. I, I um, printed up my Telegram page, like I just copied the whole thing down, uh, all the writing and posts that I have on it, and <clears throat> I sort of noticed that it's actually, as you can see, like 150 pages worth of stuff. So uh, you condense this down to one of those little five by seven paperback books. I think I got about 200 pages worth or more of, of information on here. So not all of it is prophetic words. In fact, there's only a few in there compared to everything else that I've written about on my journey, uh, this progress that I've had uh, since I believe 2021 is when I started, or I think February 2022, sorry. So um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there, but the thing is, is that the stuff that I, I thought I was going to talk about today um, is actually just a small portion because as I was going through this, I already got through like, yeah, you know, just pretty much took a third of it and went through it. I've noticed that there's actually a bunch of other prophetic words and dreams and visions and uh, things that I wanted to discuss with you today. Um, even stuff that I didn't even post in here, but just stuff that I remember the Lord bringing to my mind of stuff that I've asked him about, you know, how is this possible? Why is this happening? And him giving me answers. And I've never really told anyone about it, uh, as well as another particular dream that I've had, <clears throat> which I discussed in a previous episode where Jesus came to visit me and I'd said I wasn't too sure, maybe I'll sit on it and think about it. But after reading some of these other messages, I think I'm just going to bring that one up too. So there's actually a lot that I'm going to be going over today, and I think the best way to do this is I got a lot of reading to do, so... You're going to see this video cut a lot. Now, I know I chop up mine in previous videos to take out certain coughing and scratchiness that I have, or if there's interruptions, I pause it and restart it. But this one, I think you may actually even see like the light from the window getting brighter or darker throughout the clip because I'm going to be pausing it and I'm going to be reading the book and I'm going to, every prophetic word I have, I'm going to start a new clip and just incorporate that into one giant massive segment for you. So this is going to be throughout the day. I finally have a weekend off where the wife and I aren't going out. We're not doing anything. Um, we have the whole Saturday out. The girls are out of the house. The grandma has them, but knowing her, she'll probably drop them off relatively soon. So it may get loud again. Um, but while I have this time, I'm just going to read all this. I'm going to go through it, <clears throat> and then I'm going to explain some of these dreams and visions and answers that I've had from the Lord. And we can decide together <laughs> if they are actually of good discernment or not. Remember to take everything uh, to the Holy Spirit. Have a discerning soul into everything you do. Test all spirits. And before we do this, I'm going to take communion which I, I did order some new stuff. So I will be moving to a different wafer and I believe I'm gonna go and pick up some of that wine today. Um, a uh, Hebrew blessed wine. Um, I think it's that Concord wine. Uh, some of you may know what I'm talking about. So uh, you see it almost everywhere in almost all stores. So um, the kosher wine, I'll be getting that. But for right now, as with the last episode I had, the reason for communion, let's remember why we do this. Um, do this in remembrance of him, of what Jesus Christ did for us, in the anticipation of his coming again, and for our self-reflection into the body of Christ, and how we should be acting in according to his will. stuck to my tooth. <laughs> Maybe you're trying to tell me not to speak, Lord. No. Um, Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and this is a pretty big controversial topic on the prophetic words of today and the visions people are having. And it just seems that, man, um, 
every day there's there's new people the onslaught of prophets that i've been listening to in the past couple of years where i had to tone it down on youtube and telegram because there were just so many of them coming out and speaking so many different words i had to hone in and use my own discernment and fully focus not to say that some were wrong but because uh, there were certain segments you didn't want me to listen to anymore because i was either past that or it would just upset me because it was speaking to someone else and just a repetition of going into that again maybe bringing me back into a different way or a different feeling that i had previously that i'm now set past i think a lot of us have been in this process in our life where we need to now start honing in and really focus on what you're trying to say and also if we're listening to the prophets hone in on who it is you want us to hear for that particular day and it's just been getting exponentially more intense not just from the words that they're giving but all these new prophets that are popping up all these new people that have words from the lord and it just they, they're they're just crawling out of the woodwork by masses just the loads and loads and loads of videos that i've been seeing every day on youtube can't even keep up with them um, I'm surprised that I have the average of 20 views on mine alone that people are able to get to. And some of you subscribers, if you're listening to this and, and taking any heed into what the Lord is giving you or it's helping you out in your walk, then um, uh, that, that just, that does humble me. I, I really appreciate that. And Lord, continue down that process for them, even if it's not me. If it's someone else you need to go to, if they just need to hear straight from you alone to give them guidance and support and what is going down these days. I just hope that everyone can come to the Lord during this time, during this just flipping of the tables and the turning of the entire world system that you're going to be coming down and crashing the party. Um, it's going to be awesome to see in the great shaking that everyone's going to be freaked out, but a lot of us need to realize that it's you that is turning the tables and... I just, these words are here to help and to hone in and to um, give people more of a straight path to walk on in accordance to what you are trying to say. And I just hope that what I read today in my own visions and dreams weren't just visions and dreams randomly, but they were sent by you and that we could actually get answers on how to focus more into what you're calling us to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is going to be a fun one. So... I think what I'm going to do is just just pause, just pause it, start on page one, read, find something. And it's not like I got to go through 200 pages, you know, of reading each thing meticulously. You know, it's like I, I skim through it because I get a rough idea of what I'm writing on and where these you know stories will be placed. When I find it, I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, I, I will say this, that when I started the telegram, um, it was it was at work and I was doing a lot of multi multitasking. I was, you know, checking uh, work on the computer. I was paying off bills. I was answering the phone, and I was also multitasking and typing. And I've so far noticed a lot of typos because I'm just I'm sitting there talking to people and I'm typing at the same time. I'm really paying attention to what it is I'm writing, and I I just there's a lot of not just misspelling that that I could skim over when I read it to you. That part's easy. It's where I get, I'm typing and it's almost like dyslexic. I'm like moving words around and the grammar and the the format of the sentences sometimes are a little bit screwy. So if I read these to you and I, you know, and I stop, and I'm kind of like, you know, it's because I I wrote it weird and I got to deconstruct it and reformat it again. So if there's a lot of that, forgive me. And for those of you who actually have kept up on my Telegram page and have read it and went, Whoa, this guy cannot write for anything. Yeah, you're you're right. I can't because I was multitasking, and I'm one of those people who think I can multitask and probably can't. So, <laughs> so uh, I may go back and recorrect these on my Telegram page and just rehash the whole thing. Maybe even put it into book form so I can you know publish this out and just have a booklet for me to read. So, but at this moment, it's all just on big paper and I'm going to read it and I will pause it here. And each time I find something, it'll be a new pause on pause and I'll, I'll read that and we'll discuss it. So just like the last episode, not sure how long this is going to be because I'm finding stuff again that I totally forgot that I wrote about. So I'm going to go and rehash on those with you and we can decide together if this is just one big joke or if the Lord was actually speaking to me. Um, and you need to take it into discernment as much as I have. So let's move on. 
Uh, and one more thing, too. I should probably point out that since I am going to be reading these words to you, I will not be looking into the screen as much as I should. Um, I'll probably be down reading, sometimes maybe with my glasses if my eyes start to go, because I have really bad eyesight. I made the font big enough to where I can read it without them. So, um, and I just flipped into like page five of this 150 page mess and came to the first one. So might as well read that as long as I'm here right now. It said, I had a dream that Yellowstone blew. It was daytime, bright and sunny. I don't even recall a cloud in the sky, which is actually normal for Boise. Ooh. Sorry, I just, as a person who loves rain and fog and mist and stuff and cloudy, you know, dreary days, I've, after living in Redding and Boise, I've had my fill of the sun. But let's move on. We were driving in a car, the whole family, if I remember right. I looked over to the direction in which Yellowstone would be and saw an eruption. But this explosion was not fire or smoke, but that of water, like that of a giant hose. Um like it went off. I was slightly frightened, but also happy to see it going off, as if the sign of a new coming age. This seems like something that I would not, uh, that, that would not cause massive death. It was more of a spiritual awakening, like a spiritual eruption. A sign from God, as he is shaking to prepare for what is happening next. So, first stream, that's, that's it right there. And, yeah, in my dream, it's, it was like it was like a straight up hose of water. If you remember in the Bible when uh, Elijah called fire down from heaven, it was a pillar of fire. Or there was the pillar of uh, clouds or the pillar of fire at night for the wilderness wanderings and stuff like that. It seemed almost like that. Like it wasn't a spiraling pillar, but it was like this geyser going up. Kind of like if you can imagine um, old, old, old Faithful blowing. It's kind of what it looked like, except on a massive scale. It went straight up, and it didn't seem like this this rumbling, this shaking, this eruption of Yellowstone was going to be detrimental. Like, everyone speaks of Yellowstone. Like, if it blows, it's just, it will send the world into this, you know, ice age for hundreds of years. And I think that there's something that God may be doing where he is going to blow Yellowstone or shake it to the point that the eruption happens. And the people that may be living within that area, I mean, there, there might be some casualties, but it's not going to be earth shattering, like massive, you know, everyone dies if this Yellowstone blows kind of thing. I think maybe their calculations may be off on what may be happening, or maybe the Lord himself may hinder the eruption to the point where it's going to get people's attention on a spiritual level and wake up to what God is doing, um, <clears throat> where they realize this, there, there's something more to this than just an eruption. We've been seeing a lot of these with the volcanoes happening too, with Hamas invading um, Israel and uh where was it? Was it Saudi Arabia or no? I'm sorry. I said that wrong. I think it was Iran where they had the earthquakes and there was some Afghanistan. There was an earthquake and I think there was a volcano that blew. I'll have to go again and check. I haven't been paying attention to the news a lot. Um, that's, that's the one thing I haven't been doing is as a watchman on the wall, we're supposed to be watching news and be aware of what is going on. But, uh, lately the Lord has been turning me off to that. Like I'm, I have no idea what's going on anymore. Like Mike Johnson, I guess is at the new speaker of the house. It's, that's the only news that I've heard of so far. Like, like everything else that is happening with uh, Hamas and Israel and all these, you know, like street activists going on and things like that or whatever catastrophes or the shooting I heard about in Maine a little bit, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not paying attention to what's going on. And I think it's holding me into being oddly having more discernment to what is truly happening as opposed to just watching the news and being in fear all the time. And I think we need to get out of that. And I think some of these shakings that God is going to be doing is going to be honing more on people to focus on him and what he is going to be doing during this time where, you know, again, as I said in the previous episode, read Joel, it'll probably give a good explanation of what's going to be coming. So, and right below that dream two. Okay. So here's the second dream. I'm going to get back into it again. Not sure how I edited this one out because I was having trouble reading it at first. Again, my writing's a little messed up, but the second dream that I'm posting about, um, 
it says uh, before walking out of the house in my dream it just seemed like just a normal dream that i would be having once i got outside it, it was completely different almost as in like the dream itself was a representation of my dream inside the house was the old ways and as soon as i walked out of the house we're entering into this new thing and Lily was there with me, but Lily was kind of around starting walking age. So maybe like, you know, year and a half or, you know, probably around two years, which may be a symbolism of uh, younger in Christ or a newborn Christian. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, as I was awake for some reason, I had it going through my head, even though not part of the dream itself. Chrissy is still pregnant. I have no idea what that means. My friend Chrissy is somebody in Reading. Um, I guess maybe it's a sign that she has uh, is going to have another baby or that this dream was taking place while she was still pregnant. Um, maybe why I wrote it. But I think she had her kid after that. I don't know why this was important. I'm just saying it because it's what I wrote. In my dream, once out of the house, the sky was dark, uh, nighttime, but uh, it felt so uh, like the as if the moon was darkened, like it was it was a darkness, darkness. It was almost as if there was a purplish hue to the sky. Um, I don't know if many of you are old enough to remember back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, the, the Star Wars, the back of the action figure cards where they had that purplish sort of sky. Um <clears throat> That's what it looked like. In fact, there was a picture of a video that somebody made. It was just a CGI video. I took a picture of it because it, it showed pretty much perfectly what I saw in my dream. And I'll post that up here uh, once I figure out the editing. And in fact, I'll do it right here. You'll see the picture. So I'll give it a few seconds to, you know, implant it and then I'll begin speaking again. So that's what it looked like, but it wasn't as bright. It was, it was darker. I mean, you could tell in that photo that it was really bright, but in my dream, it was, it was like a, it was like the sky was darkness, but there was that almost kind of nebula sort of like coloring to it. There was also a type of fire in space near and around the moon. Uh, people were walking by, <laughs> said to me uh, that the world was on fire. As I looked, I saw fire on the ground, but almost in streaks, like it was moving in the houses. It was, I, I remember it was going like this, almost snake-like. The houses were not catching fire. Um, I also saw on the trees little budding, ha like little buddings happening. You know, like how in springtime you get the, the budding, the, the blooming just popping up. Um, but the budding were lit, you know, they were on fire as well too. Like the buds were little flames. Very much like uh, you see on like those lighted flower trees in stores, you know, where you get the trees and they're kind of all lit up. Um, that's what it looked like. <clears throat> I marveled at the buds in the fire and I was happy, but also slightly scared as the, you know, from the changes. As I came in close to view the building to see what it was, you know, the, you know, the houses that the, the fire was going into. Uh, as as I did that to look to see what was happening, the fire made streaks as if trying to, you know, move away or like bob and weave on the ground, uh, as if maybe kind of like a snake of some sort. I asked God, uh, what was this? Uh, what, the, what the buds represented in my dream? I'm like, what, what is this? And then I woke up. So is this maybe symbolic of uh, the glory of, that's coming down like the thing they had in Pentecost where the fire came down on top of their heads and stuff like that was weird is that this one was bobbing and weaving on the ground and went into people's houses and might do that too I don't know <clears throat> all I know is that everything was dark in the sky and there was fire everywhere um, but the fire seemed very symbolic of something and I think it might represent the glory of how it's going into other people's houses and the glory is going to be falling down I was interested to see that the fire also was kind of around the moon and the trees were lit up as well so it may be just this uh 
and partaking of the glory not just within us but the whole earth is being redeemed or the whole universe may even be redeemed is is kind of what i was getting from that dream from that darkness something is going to manifest and god's going to make an action to move so kind of what i got from that dream um hmm. here's one i just caught right after it uh, i did have a third dream sadly i don't remember it um i know there is one it's it's in my head it is not fully coming to me perhaps the lord is saving it for another time and right now i uh i can't remember it either it's still not coming to me so maybe he is saving it for another time i will say this though before i had these dreams if i recall correctly in the early morning hours i awoke i was woken up by a sound almost as if speaking directly into my ear the word acquitted I had somewhat of an idea of the word definition, you know, to the word acquitted. The definition of acquit, uh, to free someone of a criminal charge by verdict of not guilty. She was acquitted on all counts. Similar is to absolve, declare, to exonerate, to exculpate, uh, to declare, innocent, find innocent, pronounce not guilty, discharge, release, liberate, emancipate, free, set free, deliver, spare, exempt, dismiss, vindicate, let someone off the hook. I feel as if the Lord was telling me that I was acquitted of my sins and that I was ready to move into the phase of what was happening and coming this year. Yes, a lot of tests and trials have happened since, and maybe I'll explain those later. They do still happen. Yes, very much. But I feel as if he's preparing us and getting us ready for a massive harvest that's about to hit, generational harvests that we uh, did not even sow. Like it's, I mean, there's stuff that we sow and we collect, yes, but there's stuff like in what's called generational harvests, your grandfather's great, great, great grandparents or something. They started, they planted something and now it's coming to full fruition. We will be the ones that are reaping the benefits of that. Um, so be ready for it. The time is now. Yes. So yeah uh, maybe he was speaking acquitted to me though i still think that that's also speaking very much of um 45 as well and i don't see anything here that goes into more prophetic dreams so i will keep reading and we'll continue in just a sec i almost forgot to mention i should probably put the dates that i wrote these since they are prophetic this is way back in 2022 um the previous ones that i just read were from february and march of 2022 i also have one here from march 4th 2022 and i'm just going to post it up which is not really a prophetic word but just a word from the lord that he gave me today i did something in accord to notion to what the lord told me last night um uh, it was to take some, not all, but some of the prophecies which I have heard from other prophets, write them down on paper into like a little TXT file, you know, like I wrote it on a notepad and printed it out, and then seal the envelope, tape it, date it, sign it, uh, put an extra sticker on it, make sure that there's absolutely no way to show that this thing was opened or that it could be changed or anything. I, I even had Liz initial it and date it. So this was back on, I think, March 3rd is when I had it signed. Everything is done. It's been finalized. I have it around here somewhere. <clears throat> My desk is a mess. But it's been unopened and it's giving some of the prophecies so that when all of this comes to pass, I can reopen it and read some of the stuff that was on it. Maybe to you guys or to other family members or people who think that the prophets were a joke, that they didn't believe uh, that the prophets were right, you know, and, and accurate in their, their, you know, what they were saying. So I, I made a whole list of stuff. And then when it finally comes to pass, I'm going to open it up again, almost kind of like one of those time capsules and read it off all the things that I wrote. I can't remember much of anything. The only thing that I do remember the two big ones is that obviously 2020 you know election was a fraud and that's going to be shown to be proof obviously uh and then the second one was the queen was going to die that year and she did so those are the two that i remember the rest of the prophecies of which I, there was a whole list of them i can't remember the rest but i know those two were in there and one already came to pass which was a queen passing away um so just a little extra nugget in there for you guys maybe to look forward to when this all goes down maybe these episodes will be done and away with and then when it actually happens i'll post this last episode video showing all the stuff that the prophets well not all the stuff but some of the stuff that i wrote down that were kind of pivotal things um you know like okay here here they said it here's all the things you know back in 2022 i wrote it all down listed it and now they're coming to pass so we'll see how that one unfolds
Man, I'm, I'm going through some of these writings, and some of them, though not prophetic words in and of themselves, there are different things that I've been getting a lot in dreams. And I think the Lord actually spoke to me very oddly um, in certain things that I like. And one of my favorite bands is Oingo Boingo. For those of you who don't know who that is, it was Danny Elfman, the composer for all the Tim Burton films, and who, uh, you know, sings Jack and Nightmare Before Christmas and all this stuff. I'm sure some of you know who Danny Elfman is. Oinka Boingo was his original 80s band, um, and they had a few hits back then. Not too big, but uh, some of you may remember them. Uh, even my brother, who's making his own album, has John Avila, the bassist from Oinka Boingo, playing bass on his album, so which is kind of interesting. But... I've been, I had dreams, and this was in uh, March 12th of 2022, where he was using lyrics to speak to me about what was going on, both in the enemy's camp and what God is going to be doing. And it's, I thought it was kind of interesting to use these particular lyrics. Um, <clears throat> one lyric uh, from, from what you see is called, uh, what you see is not always what you get, a lesson we must not forget, one never knows what to expect. So close your eyes, and what you get is what you see and what you get. So it's God, I think, making kind of a joke. I, I hear these songs that were going through my head uh, right before waking. I get weird sounds and weird you know, hearings and speakings and, and music sometimes. And this one was going on repeat in my head until I woke up. And I'm like, God, what are you trying to tell me with this? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it shows that... Um, you know, we we need to pay attention to what God is going to be doing. Um, one never knows what to expect. Like, what you see is what you get. It's it's almost comical in a sense of what he was trying to say. Like, don't pay attention to what the evil is doing in the world. You know, there's, there's going to be something coming down the chute. Another one was from a song called Gray Matter. And I guess I heard this the same night or maybe on two different occasions. But uh, I think this is talking about the enemy and what they think of you. They say you're stupid, that you're too young to vote, that you'll swallow anything that they shove down your throat. They say that you can't think, that you haven't got a brain, that you're just there to listen, that you're just being trained. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, a third one that was going on repeat in my head was um, just the Oingo Boingo lyric called, well, why did we come all this way? Why did we come all this way? And it, it just goes on and on and on. And it, it was, I think, the Lord telling me uh, all this stuff that I'm doing on Telegram, the writing, the conditioning, the, the walking in him, the path setting, the pioneering, all that stuff. And it's during this time I was writing this, I was really feeling down and just depressed and just wanting to just give up. And I think this lyric was on repeat in my head. Why did we come all this way? You know, it's the Lord saying, why, why did we, why did you go through this pioneering path? Why did you walk all this way only to want to give up? He's like, you need to keep pressing forth. You know, there's, there's a reason why we're coming all this way. There's a reason why you're doing this conditioning, why you're being, you know, <clears throat> why you're being pushed into this direction. And it seems, oh, Con continuing down the Oingo Boingo, why did we come all this way, was followed by, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And that was going through my head, there's nothing to fear but fear itself, you know, and so it's like, give up on the fear, give up on this anxiety and loss and struggle that you're going through right now, realize why you're coming all this way, look at what the evil ones are saying to you, all right, in gray matter, and also what you see is what you get, kind of the mocking, you know, don't pay attention to what they're saying. God's going to turn this around. You'll never know what, one never knows what to expect. And it's like, this is going to be a shocking revelation. And the last Oingo Boingo dream, like music that he sang to me, ties it all in with the ending lyrics to um, try to believe. And here's how it goes. And I thought it was really cool because when I woke up, it, it the lyrics to this sunk into me a little bit deeper than anticipated because I think it's God trying to explain to us what he's trying to do. <clears throat> if you listen to the voices that were silent for so long, if you thought they went away, well, you couldn't be more wrong. If I tell you there is something that was lost but can retrieve, if I tell you there is hope if we try to believe, do you remember there's a dream that we long since put aside with the toys that we discarded and the tears we never cried? We can have it once again if we try, baby, try. And... <clears throat> 
if you think of that word from the past eras of Christians or even the prophets speaking, you know, the biblical scriptures of what these words were trying to say to us. If you listen to the voices that were silent for so long, he's trying to bring back up what has been in the past is now coming to fruition, is now coming to be. Like now is the time for all of this to happen, but we need to try to believe in what God is doing and have faith in him. So for those of you who aren't Tonga Blingo fans, and I was just reading off a bunch of lyrics that might not make a bunch of sense, but for those of you who are fans and you listen to those in those successions and where it ended, I thought it was kind of interesting. Like it, it all just sort of swirled into this one thing that God was speaking to me through these lyrics. And I woke up and I was like, man, I need to get back on the ball. I need to start focusing on what he's calling me to do. I can't be living in this depression and fear and just worry and just uh, loss of friends th th that I've had. And I need to just keep pioneering because we, I need to trust in what he's going to be doing. And it'll probably be beyond expectation because one never knows what to expect. Let's move on. <laughs> and flipping a few more pages. I just remembered uh, there, there's another post where God spoke to me. Um, what's the date on this one? March 19th. So it was about a week later. He spoke to me again in an Oingo Boingo dream as I was waking up. He was singing these lyrics to me uh, from a song called Long Breakdown. And I believe this is what God was speaking to me about certain issues he has. He says, everywhere, everywhere, there is something to believe in. Everyone and his brother has a message for me somewhere. I believe in the cry of little children. There's a thorn in my side that makes me want to free them. There's a cry, there's a cry off in the distance of a long, long breakdown. And I think that's going to be as some of the prophets say, God is coming back for the children. He's going to be breaking everything down. He's coming back to save them from this, the, the sex trade and the black market and, and the killing and sacrifices of the unborn as, as well as grown children for these black masses and stuff. And I heard these lyrics and uh, <laughs> they were going through my head and that just speaks volumes as well. So yeah, pretty, pretty intense stuff. And I, I love the way that he spoke to me through these songs. And I knew exactly what he was talking about as the song was going through my head. I'm like, wow, you, you, just, you know how to pick the tracks. I'll give you that. So let's move forward. Following up on those Boingo tracks um, from April 15th, 2022, and updated, I guess, on the 27th, too, uh, was this thing called Unlawful Information. So I heard this morning, while in a hypnopompic state, that's the transition from sleep to wakefulness. This is usually where I only hear things, like I did with the Younger Boingo lyrics, but this time I actually had a vision while waking up. Um... And the more prophetic visions I have are more when I'm like in full lucid dreaming and I'm kind of more aware uh, that that I'm having dreams. Um, but this one, as I was waking up, uh, were kind of like flipping through a, a television um, where the sound more or less remains the same. Like I'm getting sounds, but the visions I get are like rapid pace flipping through my head. Um, and... Not that I believe in horoscopes or anything, but if you ask a Pisces what's on their mind, that's kind of what it's like for me. Just, just random flip on the television, that's what's going through my mind. Uh, so, it's kind of making a joke on that, but that's kind of what this dream was like as well. The quick vision I saw was flipping through what seemed to be that of news media, but the words were always the same. Unlawful information. <sighs> so, is this a route the deep state and global elites will go? They are starting to see the tides turning, especially with, uh, at this point, this is when I was writing about Elon Musk buying Twitter. Oh, okay, here we go. This is where I'm trying to get at uh, with Elon Musk buying Twitter. Sorry for the pause in that. I'm just trying, this is a long, like, text that I'm writing. So the pivotal point of it is the only other route for the elites to have in making such a uh, sale with, with Twitter, now X, um, is to make speech or information unlawful. It will be illegal to speak this information. It is a sign of desperation. They have no more cans to shoot out of. It is their last attempt to silence those who will expose them all. And 
even today we we kind of see that i just got a post today up on facebook saying that um they found one of my posts you know to to be not to their standards the thing is is that this post was from back in 2020 uh, i think it had to do with alex jones and um the the election uh, tampering so they found that three years later and they posted it up and said it was not up to them so I, I guess I guess posting up Alex Jones is unlawful for them so yeah yeah it seems from what I said in the stream that the, the you know these these actions will be very short-lived and it seems that we're getting past that now uh, after the buying of Twitter we see sort of the tone down on what was called um, what was it the uh oh with the fact checkers sorry it took me a while to figure out. i had a had brain freeze for a sec I had to pause it because i can remember what it was called it's been so long yeah with the fact checkers we see that sort of dwindling down and like now the truth is starting to come out i think they're starting to realize that this action of being uh what was called unlawful information i think they tried to do that route for a, a second and it just it fizzled out and faded this is where we get that where we had that crazy woman singing that mary poppins song about disinformation and stuff like that like they were trying to go that route and uh even from what i posted here um in in my information that i had in this dream it seemed that that was going to be very short-lived like everyone's going to look at that and go you guys are idiots this is what are you trying to pull here and since that fizzled out and faded we see more truth coming to light it's like the cloud sort of parted and i'm not sure exactly what it Elon is going to do with X in the long run all I know is that seems to be a pivotal point like his action that he took whether for ill intent or for good reasons um, was sort of the starting point of this information uh, disinformation uh, dying down if you will and now the truth is starting to be brought to light so I found that interesting as well just a constant clicking and a constant fast-paced motion of the news that they were trying to get out and you know disinformation 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 constantly 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 and you know fact checkers just all the time Elon buys Twitter and it just kind of goes and sort of dies down so we see that slowly fading out it's still around obviously they're still trying to control the narrative but um it's it's falling apart they got they're trying to plug up all the holes in this dam and it's just not working there's more information coming out and soon the flood dams are going to break and all this information that we've been trying to speak to people are going to be exposed and it's going to be a wild fun time so hold on to that let's move forward i found some more from uh july of 2022 Yep, July 14th some dreams that I had and I'm writing about these prior to obviously but I mean it's like I've had these dreams some time back and it says I cannot remember when the first one was the first dreams I had of this but I do know that it took place during the daytime in my dream the sky was blue and yet I could tell there was a spinning in the sky a spinning in the atmosphere maybe closer to dawn or dusk it was a small like tint of a twilight effect in the sky but more or less it was blue but with stars everything was spinning in a circular pattern now, i don't know if some of you remember uh the disney marvel show moon knight when was his name was spinning the sky and it was all spinning around and twirling and he's trying to go back in time to a certain to align a certain star pattern <clears throat> but that's what it looked like in my dream um it had that sort of effect and uh like I, I i don't know if that's symbolic to like some sort of shifting in the atmosphere um but i do know that i also put in my notes here that it wasn't a rehashing in my dream from moon knight because i had this dream before moon knight came out so i i didn't even see that if i had i had this dream and then i watched moon knight and saw that and i was like oh that's what it looked like um there was also something about the planets being seen within the spin too it's like all the universe was uh, rotating but the earth was normal we didn't feel the effects of the spin though in the dream it did make me feel a little dizzy and a little woozy to see it happening i cannot remember but i feel there may have also been some portals in the sky opening up the heavenly portals and for those of you who don't know what portals are because it's a new thing that some of us <laughs> have been woken up to um, more of a i guess a pentecostal thing but when you think of jacob's ladder when you see angels going up and down descending from these gateways that's what's called a portal or i will open up the doors of heaven or i'll open up the gateways of heaven that's kind of what a portal is um <clears throat> this is why 
when I hear the term that, uh, you know, God is raising up a bride without spot or blemish who the gates of hell will not prevail against. All these people are like, gates don't move. It's like if you're thinking of gates in the term of heavenly portals like Jacob's Ladder, yes, they move. They can open and close anywhere. So um, it's I, I, just something that I wanted to bring up because I, I heard so many Christians talk about that. Well, uh, hell's not on the move. We're supposed to be a children of light. We're supposed to be on the move. It's like, trust me, hell is on the move. I, I guarantee hell is on the move and those gates can open and close any place just as much as the heavenly host, uh, the gates to heaven, the portals of heaven, the Jacob's ladders can open up and close in any place where they can ascend and descend or bring in their spiritual warriors just as much as hell can bring in their spiritual warriors and uplift and uproot this place. I mean, if hell doesn't move and gates don't move and there's nothing to fight against, what are we fighting against? You know, it makes no sense. It's like, yes, these gates, these particular portals, these doors, these gates do move so they can open and close at will, depending on who's summoning them or, you know, who's using them. So you need to be very aware of that. And in my dream, the spinning, <coughs> there was uh, a certain uh, the feeling of portals opening and closing. So this may not be uh, so much a physical spinning of the earth, you know, of like God trying to realign stuff. I don't know. Um, it could be just a depiction of the spiritual warfare. Well, things down here in the normal, you know, on, I mean, not normal, but here on earth look normal, I guess is the way I should say it. So... There was a second dream that I'm posting up, and in this one, it was nighttime, not daytime. The sky was dark. I do not recall any rapid spinning, but I do remember wanting to see the meteor shower coming. <laughs> there was also a feel of some sort of shift in the sky. Um, though I can't recall uh, memories or visions of what it was. Uh, perhaps this greenish northern light movement of like star positions. Uh, there were shakings, too. What I can surmise of these dreams is that God is going to shift something. <clears throat> and I don't know what it is. It could be an actual planetary shift. It could be a, a universal one. It could be just an earthly one. It could be a pol polar flip. It could be the aligning uh, back to true north, you know, like before, like pre-flood times. Maybe a restoration of the Garden of Eden. I, I have no idea. Um, it could be a turning back of the clock or a planetary movement like we saw in Moon Knight, which, you know, I don't know why that would happen. God said that he is restoring the time and bringing back the time and, you know, uh, compensating us for time lost. That could be symbolic of that. Um, and again, it may not be physical at all. These may just be spiritual implications, a showing of what is happening in the spiritual right now, as opposed to in the natural. Now, we, we see the effects of the spiritual coming into the natural. Uh, we, we see the, the fight slowly being turned. Um, but the more we pray and declare and decree, the more we um, are in alignment and agreement with what God is doing, we will start to see what is happening in the spiritual be brought forth into the natural. So, and maybe these dreams were just symbolic of that, like how the earth was standing still and all this chaos was going on around it in the heavenlies and like not really anyone was paying attention at least in my dream i was seemed to be the only one that was like really trying to call it out and be like hey guys you see what's going on so i don't know uh, not to say i'm the only person obviously I, there's tons and tons of prophets and you know millions of christians out there that believe this it's just i don't know it, again it could be just symbolic for people in the world not paying attention to what is happening spiritually and those of us who are awake are trying to wake people up and show them what's happening and they're just turned off to it so well let's move forward again okay and literally turning the page after giving my last one here's another one uh that is from i'm guessing june as well now these are very long ones so um July, sorry, 2022. <sighs> There's a dream I forgot to mention in a third part, uh, in a three part series from above. Oh, uh, it was into the three parts, the ones, the last year that I mentioned one that happened in the day, one that happened in the night. And this is the third one. And this one happens the previous night. So, of writing this, I mean. So, it happened last night. There seemed to be a war coming within our schools. Um, <clears throat> in the dream, we were gearing up for a battle that was coming inside the school we were in. I did not see the enemy, but I did have a notion in my dream that they were undead warriors. Now, since I didn't ever saw them, I don't know if it was like 
in a sense like drugs or zombies or something like that something on the lines of those like in game of thrones okay so like those yeah those in the in the north <clears throat> um or perhaps army of darkness uh just a horde but not so much zombies as undead fighters so they weren't mindless they were i don't know maybe being controlled in a sense or had like a hive mind this was not the only one there, oddly, or sorry, I was not the only one there. Oddly, the majority of people who were there uh, were there to battle, and they were kids. Uh, they were prepping and being on the lookout in various hallways. Uh, anyway, right before I woke up, I heard the bells toll from uh, outside. It was ringing as a warning sign that the undead army was close and that we need to be ready for the attack. I found it unsettling. <clears throat> that as I made my way to the back, uh, what seemed to be the gym area of the school, uh, so that I can get ready to fight, the various halls I walked through had kids like middle schoolers in it. As part of the lookout, standing guard in the doorway, ready to warn others who were behind the doors, you know, uh, like they were protecting the people behind the doors, most of them being elders. Uh, the children were the ones being lookout. Before any of the army entered in, I woke up. <clears throat> Sadly, because I really had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> back in the day when I used to have heavy dreams, I would be able to wake up, go to the bathroom, fall asleep, and go back into the dream. I don't know what it is with me in dreams, but like in the previous uh, tales I had in like spiritual warfare, I'd be able to go into dreams and like do exorcisms and banishings and stuff like that and warnings of evil spirits and diminishing them and stuff like that and this is just one of the things that where if a i knew i was dreaming i'd be able to have all sorts of powers or if it was a deep enough dream i'd be able to wake up do something go back to sleep and fall back into that dream or like figure out where i was in that dream and start from there but this one was uh this one seemed more of a lighter dream so i wasn't able to do that <clears throat> But this time, oh, it, it says when I woke up, I, I was I was awake. I didn't go back. I couldn't go back to sleep. I was just fully awake. So I didn't go back into the dream to see what happened. I'm not sure how to express this dream, only that I can go off feelings of what was being emitted uh, forth in the dream. Something tells me that this uh, will have to deal with uh, school choice. Could be. Trump was talking about school choice. Uh, maybe when that kicks off, there'll be some sort of a war against that. Um, and how the elites will use something dead, as in something which is useless. I didn't get the feeling that these would, you know, this wouldn't be a, a battle we, we couldn't win. Uh, it seemed at large, uh, it was um, large in scale as the undead tactics were. It seemed that we were able to overcome it. It seemed that a lot of us there weren't, weren't too worried about it, but it seemed like it was this big onslaught attack. Uh, also, it seemed that we were waiting for a particular undone army <clears throat> as well to show up and fight, like we were waiting for them to make the advancement. And it seemed that our army, which was, uh, you know, prepared for battle and waiting, had the upper hand as if it was uh, sort of our ace in the hole, like we were waiting for them to attack and we had the ace in the hole. But it did seem kind of bothersome that, uh, oh, it also says it seems both sides were trying to use old tactics, old items, old precedents, old laws, no longer in use. The list can go on and on um, as to what exactly these undead armies symbolized. It, it could be the the mindless masses too we see all these protests speaking up for palestine and hamas which literally means violence and they have no idea exactly what it is they're supporting the the mindless rabble i think might be another way to symbolize what this undead army is but we were prepared we were ready um it says what seemed to be the main message at least for me even above the armies were the children they were uh ready and waiting ready to fight and to give the alarm of those you know who are going to try and enter into the school it's like now they were awake as well <clears throat> they were willing but looked scared some even crouching or huddled on the floor but they were willing to take the first actions while it seems the older people the elders uh, were going to take the full battle f you know further into the school and i hope this was not symbolic for another situation like uvalde school you know with the shooting and stuff like that you know where children were pretty much cannon fodder for for the elites um sacrificing their lives so that the parents would wake up and i, I hope that's not symbolic of this dream <laughs> so that you know the parents will finally take action of what's going down we need to be um 
uh, yeah, stop the children's deaths. Uh, parents need to wake up to the battle that is going on, both for their safety and for, you know, their children's. And to unindoctrinate the educational system. Quite possibly a return of God into the schools. So that was a vision I had of that one. It seems that there's whatever's going to be happening, <clears throat> whatever the return is, uh, it seems it won't go down without a fight, at least in the schools, the educational system, the school choice, the fighting. And I, I think it's going to be the children who are going to be standing up and taking action. We see this today, too. Uh, there's been a lot of protests now of schools you know, with the trans bathrooms and a lot of students standing up and saying, no, we're not going to do this. We're, you know, there's there's been a lot of protests on the children's parts, and it seems they're the ones taking the action. And the parents are sort of in the background, sort of like we're going to eat our milk and cookies while you guys go out and be cannon fodder for this. Um, it seems this younger generation is actually waking up more to what is going on than the actual parents are. So whether that's a good sign or not, I don't know. Um, if you're a parent, I think you need to be active or at least very aware of what is happening and be outspoken against this indoctrination, um, this woke system ideology, uh, this elite Luciferian ideology that's going around in schools these days and just tearing apart the educational system. So I think there's a war coming, but it seems a war that we're going to win. It seems that the undead mass that's going to be coming up against us, um, they're, they're going to try and storm the system but we're already in there we have the ace in the hole um it seems the kids will also be leading the way and that's uh it's it's just we'll we'll win it but it seems like a battle that may seem a little freaky at first and the thought that all we could do is hear the people or, or know that they were coming um seemed to me more that the fear was based on the speculation of what was going to happen as opposed to actually being in the battle, which will just probably o obliterate this system. So that's kind of good news to hear. So don't be in fear on that. Um, that's, I guess, the take I had from this stream. So let's move further. There was also something else that I should bring up that I don't in my notes here and I haven't wrote it down. It was just one of those things where God spoke to me and kind of gave me this sort of like quick lightning flash answer. And it was in regards not to schools, but the Babylonian system and the <clears throat> the the fiat system, if you will, uh, and the return of the gold standard and all this. And how we went from, if you look at things like credit unions uh, that would pay like 8 to 10% interest on your savings accounts like 10, 20 years ago, to now where it's like 0.01%. I'm like, Lord, how did we get to this? Like, what... What changed so much that it dropped to that? And the Lord almost gave a, me a lightning response answer and saying, who said it dropped? And I'm like, well, it's at 0.1%, like, you know, or 0.01%. Or like, how did, how did it go from that to, to that? And his answer that he was giving to me was it didn't. And I'm like, well, where's the money? You know, and it's just like, where do you think the money is? You know, it's like, who do you think has it? Who do you think is taking from you guys? Who do you think controls this percentage system? And I'm like, well, is it the worldly system? How, how is it? How is it we can get this far and not realize that they're stealing the money? Like these, these high, and, and it might not even be the banks. It may just be these global elites that control the banks and they're the ones that set the percentages and any income that is supposedly given from the usage of the money in, in this in this world monetary system, in this banking system, they keep and they give us the pittance. When back in the day it was, we would get the percentages, you know, and I'm sure they took their cut too, but we would at least get a higher percentage. And it's gotten dropped down and down and down to the point that we think this is just the system. Well, it's, it's just, this is a world system. It used to be, you know, this certain percentage back in the day, and now it's this. And it's like, well, it never changed. It's always been that, but they make you think it's that. And they are the ones keeping all the percentages to themselves. So I think when this turnaround happens, and I think that's why he gave me that lightning response too, is that when this happens, all the money that was stolen from us will be given back. I mean, we'll be getting, we'll be getting back, you know, sevenfold or tenfold or whatever it is, amount of money coming back to us. But part of it is this money that was stolen from us, from this banking system. And I know I shouldn't be speaking that because I am a banker. I'm an insurance agent too, and I work at a bank. Um, I don't think a lot of banks are like that. You know, the bank I, I work at is, is great. They're, they're really nice. I love the employees there. I love working at that bank. It's a small one. And they have a lot of competition against the big banking elites. Um, 
but they they don't agree with this new digital currency they they want like many of us want to get back to the gold standard um and i think once this flips over there's going to be some banks who are going to be taken over and i hope my bank is one of them because it's called banner bank <laughs> in the day i got hired i had all these weird prophetic words i was listening to online talking about banners be under the banner wave the banner <laughs> it's like why are you talking about banners so much and i'm like oh i just got hired at banner bank oh that makes sense so i'm hoping that that was kind of a, a sign for me to be like don't worry you know even though you might be out of a job for a while when this whole thing flips over things might be shut down or there may be days of darkness or no electricity or something like that when the lights come back on you know these will be one of the good guys and i hope that my bank is because that would be really great and i hope this return of all the income that was lost to us you know will be given back in excremental amounts so um did i just say excremental <laughs> i'm not awake extramental amounts sorry i'm i'm out of it i need more coffee an espresso or something anyways that's just something else that the lord gave me a flash of and it's it's weird because i don't think of these things it's the best way to explain how the lord speaks to you at least from my perspective is he would give you the answer before you come to the conclusion and that's just the way he did it for me it's like well you know why do you think the percentages have changed or who said they have changed you know where do you think the money's going and i had to work out the situation and come to that conclusion it's like oh okay he's done that for me a lot of times i would ask him certain things he'd tell me to do something and i'm i'd just be like why would i do this you know and then he'd give me the answer because if you did this a leads to b leads to c and this is where you get your answer and it's like oh of course why didn't i think of that it's like you didn't i did so that's that's how i know the lord is talking to me so unless i'm schizophrenic which i don't think i am um that's that's a good way to understand how the lord i mean he, he may speak to you in different ways but that's how he does it for me which i always thought was interesting so he gives me the answer before he gives me the calculation of it so uh let's move forward uh this little nugget that i have from the 20th of july is is a good one to pay attention to and to take heed to when the lord tells you to do something and i'll give a full example of why you should do that because i didn't <laughs> so it says <clears throat> um again how i explained when i have these uh these hypnopompic states i guess that's the way you pronounce it it's that uh, it's time when you're waking from sleep it's uh, in between sleep and wake where you he where i hear a whole bunch of different things like those ongo bongo songs where i had those visions of the unlawful information he gave me another one <clears throat> uh to which um there there were two of these which stuck out in the past month that caught my attention sadly the first one uh was only half remembered i do remember waking in the morning with the words being spoken going through my head someone was telling them to me but they were speaking as if i was saying it as if they were urging me to repeat the words almost kind of like telephone like i'm saying something now you have to repeat what i'm saying repeat what i'm saying say it and so and, and i awoke with those words in my mind and i had a strong inclination from the voice in my head which i'm guessing was the lord's that i had to say these words as a means of remembrance in other words i needed to declare them i needed to decree them i needed to actually say them so that they were embedded within me if i did not say the words out loud i would forget them or at least forget them in part uh, noticing that my wife liz was still asleep because i was just waking up uh, i did not want to say them out loud for fear that i would wake her and at the very least i should have mumbled them um because then i would have at least said them to myself or at least the voice inside my head that you know that it'll be embedded within me but i just said to myself that i'll i'll remember it you know I'll, I'll wake up in a little bit and i'll say it again like in the shower or something when i usually speak to the lord and sure enough when i awoke i forgot what was said to me <laughs> so um not not everything but just one word from the message that was given and it was called i am blank i am equipped and it's like he wanted to impart to me something and i could not for the life of me remember what that one blank word was uh, but i do know it was on the lines of atoned or chosen confirmed redeemed uh, so like i am atoned i am equipped or i am chosen i'm confirmed i'm redeemed and i am equipped like he's he's telling me like this is what you are now um 
but I can remember it. Uh, so maybe it's more lessons to be learned. I guess when the Lord tells you to actually impart and say something or do something, it's it's good to follow up on it so that you may actually become stronger. Or maybe he was trying to give me something to set me forth into something that I can move forward in. And because I didn't do that, I was slightly hindered. Like I remembered for the most part everything except the one word. And maybe it's just that one thing that's been holding me back. Because I, I do feel that a lot of my progress has been a little sluggish. Um throughout this past year or so like I've been wanting to learn more and I want to get active more but I've, I've just felt not approved enough or like I'm not doing it right or I'm not you know and maybe that's the word that he was trying to tell me so I could get it into my soul and I could remove those feelings or those emotions or those discouragements I have from my body and push it outward so I can be more active in my calling but I've noticed that that one word is the one thing that's missing from me and I can't remember what that one word was <laughs> so interesting how God works um yeah, so just take note of that. When God tells you to do something, even though you're not up for it, probably a good idea to do it. So let's move forward. Okay, and then the second one, as I mentioned, in regards to that uh, I am blank, I am equipped, I wrote... Um, Anyway, upon waking, because I was in that state again on, on another night where I was starting to hear lyrics, and <clears throat> this one was interesting. I heard the lyrics to Save the Last Dance for Me. And I don't, I don't know the lyrics to this song. I know a lot of lyrics. Like, <clears throat> I can recite a lot of lyrics just straight from my mind. Because, I mean, being a lyricist and writing lyrics myself for my music, I'm used to writing in that sense and, and knowing songs. This song, I don't know. <clears throat> but I had it in my dream. So when I woke, I knew it was the Lord speaking to me and I wanted to confirm it. So I went in and looked up the lyrics online. Um, but I will... I'll read it anyways. Uh, it says, mainly, just that very line in particular. I won't post uh, or, you know, waste any time posting up all the lyrics, but for those who uh, don't know them, you can see the tie-in to that of Christ and his bride. And I think the song that he was trying to implement to me was a song about me being the bride to Christ, or he's, he's speaking specifically to and mass, you know, the whole as bride of Christ. Though the song itself has more of an intimate relationship to that of a man and woman, it seems the lyrics are also speaking to that of Jesus and the world. And when I speak of the world, I, I don't mean, um, you know, like the Luciferian world, the, the evil, the, the world. I mean, like the world as life in general, you know, like our experiences, our enjoyments, friends, family, etc. Stuff like that. Um, know who is going to take you home uh, when the dance is done. So have fun, enjoy life, you know, obviously have discernment and, you know, sometimes life is to be endured as well as enjoyed as Jake Johansson would say, <laughs> or joke. Um, if all you do uh, is part of God's plan and of his will, then do not be hindered. All is open to you. The evening is there to enjoy, but when the night is done, remember who takes you home. Um, this one line verse, uh, there's a one line verse in the song, which speaks on many levels, as I have spoken to you above, but also remember to save the best for last and that the best is yet to come. Enjoy life. Stay true. Do not be deceived by others asking to take you away from the dance so that you can be enticed and left to your own devices. As long as one knows who uh, they are staying true to, in the end, all will be well. So I'd recommend read the lyrics to save the last dance for me. And just that was going through my head. And when I woke up, I, I Googled the lyrics and read them. And I was like, yeah, this is this is kind of a, a, a speaking to the bride and the church to save the last dance for him. Um, there's a lot of things in life that can pull you away from Jesus, but as long as you know who's, who you're, who you're with, who's going, who you're going to truly be dancing, dancing with, who's going to be taking you home at the end of the night when the curtain finally draws. Um, and if you're true to God's plan, you, you know, you're not being promiscuous and going out and like, you know, doing drugs and, you know, having, committing adultery and fornication and sex and lewdness and, you know, watching all this vile evilness. I think this is a song that's more based on, um, the worldly enjoyment that God is trying to give you through life. You know, this, this experience, you know, all the wonders that you have with it. <clears throat> is a gift to you but it's god's gift and it's the one he is the one giving it to you and in the end you need to come back home with him because that was his gift to you and it's like don't stray from that last dance so um 
moving on, I might as well just jump right into it. And this one was interesting because I, I just read it before on pausing my previous time. And I remember uh, in a previous episode... I can't remember which one it was, but I was giving my end time episode prayer and I was explaining how I, I felt that all this stuff was um, not preemptive, uh, but it was my episodes were being made for a time. Maybe not now because I only got just a couple watchers, but once all this stuff goes down and tables flip, that people will be coming on and watching a lot of these prophets and some of mine in particular. And this was, I was in that hypnopompic state again. Um, and I had a message and this time it was a vision too. It wasn't just the sound. And I envisioned <clears throat> writing on a black backdrop with white lettering, kind of like a chalkboard or like kind of one of those got milk commercials. Remember the black and then just the white logo. <laughs> um, but these letters were far more stricter in font. It, it, it was, it was bold and it was, uh, flashed to me, um, about a second before I awoke. And it was, you know, how sometimes in dreams, the words are sort of garbled up. You can't, you can't make out anything that it says. You get kind of an idea of what it's supposed to mean, or, you know, you can assume what it says. Now, these words were like right in my face. Boom. In bold letters, it says in God's timing on FB. And I'm guessing FB meaning Facebook in God's timing on Facebook. And I'll go on saying this can be many things for many people. For me, it seemed to be a layered message. But the thing that stuck out the most was for many, especially on this site, and this site meaning Facebook, I'm guessing, it will need to be experienced, it will need to be experienced then expressed. I post my clips, my segments on YouTube and on Facebook um, as a means for those who will be able to watch them and understand them in the times we're heading into. And the thing is, is that the trouble is with that uh, is I have this need for people to wake up to it and fall into alignment and agreement with what the Lord and his plan is like right now, like right this second. And that's kind of like one of my pet peeves, too. And I know it's one of my flaws that I have is just wishing everyone would just be like, you need to wake up right now, you know, and it's just like no one is. And so that's, that's kind of one of my flaws is just thinking that everyone needs to be on this level instantaneously this second right now and not giving them time to grow into the Lord or wake up to what he's trying to do or give them their own timing to this. And I think that's why a lot of Christians these days are getting very fed up with what the Lord is doing because we want him to literally speak the words or snap his fingers and everything be changed. And he doesn't understand this is a gradual process because God is, um, long suffering, but he's not all suffering. Um, there is going to be a time where the tables will be flipped, but he's long suffering and allowing people to come to him. And just cause we're there doesn't mean that everyone else is. And we need to give them the time needed to wake up to what his Lord is, uh, you know, waking them up to or calling them into. So <clears throat> yeah. And it says, and it aggravates me to see when people do not, as if they are brushing off my videos, uh, which could very well be the issue. Yeah. If you're brushing off my videos, that's fine. I, I think I'm crazy half the time too. So don't worry. You're not the only one. <laughs> so, uh, so most likely think I'm crazy or insane, gullible, but I'll buy all this prophetic talk at times. I feel uh, that way myself. And I, I do. I, I, every time I make these videos, I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing these videos. I just, I feel like I almost can't wait for them to be over, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> And then, because I, I do feel like I'm either leading people astray or feel crazy myself because of all the stuff we're waiting on and how nothing's coming to pass. And if it is, it's just this trickle, 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 trickle. And it's just like, we're seeing winds, but it's just so meticulously slow. It's like watching syrup run down a tree. It's just, oh, I hate it. Or the sap run down a tree. Sorry. It's just, oh, so annoying. But the message given to me in black and white seemed to promote the idea to wait on the Lord, even with experiencing too much on the subject, or uh, even with expressing too much on the subject, sorry. In short, uh, those who know it is there and are in agreement already have done so, whether they know it or not. Those who do not know it um, or know it, it is there or who are not believing will not change until they experience it in God's timing. So as, as I was just saying before, and I wrote it here too. Yeah. Those who do not know it is there <clears throat> will either find it in due time or they want it all. So, and when, if at all, they do find it, they will have the same 
the, for those who do know it right now. Yeah, so sorry for the writing that I do. I, the way that I express my writing sometimes is a little weird, but pretty much in short, let God run his course. Let him do it in his, his, his timing. The people that aren't awake up, you're not going to wake them up. Only the Holy Spirit can convict their hearts. And when they wake it up, they will be on the same line as, as you will, uh, as you are. You know, they may need some encouragement or some, um, you know, some prayers and stuff or some bringing into the fold and expressing what's going on. We just need to remember that it's in God's timing, not ours. I, I wish everyone was woken up. Man, you can't imagine how badly I wish that, but it'll come in his own timing and we just need to be patient and wait on the Lord. So, uh, yeah. And it was interesting how it just didn't just say in God's timing, it said in God's timing on Facebook, which I thought was weird because I, I think because I keep posting on Facebook, all this stuff for people to watch. And I think maybe the bombardment and the over, just just the dumping, you know, here, eat this elephant every day that I try and get people to wake up. They either think I'm just crazy or, you know, just way too much into it. But uh, I just do it as a means to try and wake people up. And maybe I could be hindering their walk as opposed to helping it. So I need to be aware of that as well as these videos. This is why I don't go overboard with them posting up everywhere. It's why I don't monetize it. Um, I don't make any money off these videos. I just post them up and those who see it and want to watch it can. Um, and I, I don't do it for cash. I don't do it for anything. I just do it because I want to get it out because I want people to be awake and aware of what's going on. I have my own job. This is not my job. This is not the way I make money. It never will be the way I make money. If God wants to supply me with funds, he can do it another way, but I'm not going to use, um, the expression or giving these words out to people as a way to make money. I, I don't, I just don't find that Christian. So uh, yeah, let's move forward. And now I just got to the page of my writings of um, episode five, maybe, or episode four, I think episode five of They Will Catch Up. You know, it's, um, it's, it's just a, about friends that I have that are very dear to my heart, uh, the ones that are within my inner circle that none of them really believe what is going on. Um, uh, that I was watching a video on how, you know, we need to let go of certain things for the Lord so that we can progress into what he's calling us to do. And I was writing, uh, the pain of these thoughts were coming back to me, uh, cause I got over them for a little bit, but then they came back to me yet again, as I was watching those video clips that I just mentioned about letting go and, um, that I will have to let go to do the work God has called me to, you know, and, and uh, never be able to see those who I have wished uh, to fellowship with. Um, in the herd of those thoughts, I heard a small, soft whisper inside me speak forth, they will catch up. And this is one where I was just depressed and burned and thinking, man, I'm, I'm never going to see these people again. I'll never talk to them again. I'll never see them again. He's putting, you know, new people in my path. He has a walk for me to do. And even though I, I may do what his calling is, I will work with these people. I may even have acquaintances and friendships. I won't have the close friendship that I had or that I really wanted with these people. And that's when I heard the Lord say, they will catch up. And in that moment, my look on the situation changed. My feelings of hurt and depression were there still, knowing I had to still let go of them. But the promise that the Lord gave me led uh, to the hope and realization of why I needed to press forward. It was for them. It was for many and for his work. And yes, it was also um, for just uh, that that relationship value and I think what it is is that he needs us to let go of certain people certain places certain things certain interests for a while so we can do this walk um, it's almost as if he was pruning you're taking the tree and you're you're pruning off the leaves uh, or you're pruning it off also to have branches grow and flourish more elsewhere on the tree and that doesn't mean that they're not going to return in your life. They may return back even better and greater than what it originally was. But we need to give time for the Lord to work in their lives as well as in our lives and have us do our calling so that he can bring everything to the pivotal point of where it needs to be. That includes the previous relationships that we had, Lord willing, if he allows them to happen. So if they are returned back, it'll be exponentially better than originally intended it'll be more bloomed more fuller more fragrant more you know it'll just be beyond our wildest dreams and so 
even though I mentioned this in a previous episode, pretty much the whole episode, um, I just wanted to bring it up again to let those of you who have lost someone in, in your life, and I'm not talking death, I mean just like friendship-wise, um, family, people you care about and love and cherish and admire, that you really want in your life, and they're just not there anymore. They, they, they have gone so far separately on their own path maybe because god was leading it or maybe because they just don't believe in what you're trying to express right now but it will all come back in time to god's perfect alignment so i need to be aware of that and just trust him on what he's doing because he said it over and over plenty of times to me trust me trust me you need to trust me on this you just they will catch up just you know now is not the time to think about this. There's other things that need to be done, and they have other things which need to be done. And when it all comes climacting into this giant goulash of what the Lord is trying to do, you know, into like everything in, into this perfect pie he's trying to bake, that's when I think everything will be returned back to us, including them. So, again, Lord willing, and I really hope so, because I really would like them back in my life. So, uh, let's move forward. Okay, so we are almost uh, an hour and a half into this segment, and I'm not even halfway through my notes. So instead of this dragging out for another hour and a half, I think what I'm going to do is stop it here and make this a part one and then do a part two and maybe change out the next episode I was going to do, which was the same thing, um, the dreams and visions, uh, other prophetic voices. But I think the thing is, is that I've been giving recommendations for people to watch each week, you know, uh, go see Amanda Grace, go listen to Shirley Lice, go listen to Diana Larkin, go check them out, go watch Elijah, uh, Elijah streams, go watch Watchmen on the wall. And I keep giving off all these people and all their prophetic words. And I've come to the conclusion that I don't really need to make a secondary video on all those words because we're talking three years of videos from like probably a man, probably a hundred prophets that that are out there that I see on a daily basis. Um, and to try and shoehorn all their words in or certain things which they prophesied about and like happen and stuff. It's just like it's going to I can do an entire series just on that alone. I mean, and Elijah Streams already does do that, and so does Watchmen on the Wall. So it's like, why would I rehash that? I, I might as well just make a part two of my prophetic dreams and visions and the words that I've gotten from the Lord and just follow up with that uh, on a second on a second <laughs> episode because it looks like we can go like probably three or four hours in total on everything that I want to mention. So just those two episodes alone, we're going to split in half, and I think I'll end it here. And I'm also going to try something new for this episode and for next episode as well, and that is I'm not going to recommend any books and I'm not going to recommend any prophets. One because um, these, I don't want to get too jarbled up with what I've been trying to read in regards to other prophets, but also because I, I think it's becoming a little too clustered. Uh, I will continue it after these two episodes. I'll start getting, you know, prophets and book recommendations and all that stuff. But I think for this, my dreams and visions, I'm going to leave it empty because I want you to focus on listening to the Lord. I want you to start hearing what he has to say. I want you to start getting closer to the Lord and pressing into what he uh, is calling you to do and any recommendations or words or like actions that he is you know, trying to speak to you uh, to tell you to do or tell you to listen to or give you answers to. Um, I don't like the idea of just constantly barraging you with like new books and new videos and new clips and new prophets and check this, check this, check this, check this. And you're, you're constantly putting too much devotion into what they're saying or even what I'm saying, what anyone's saying apart from the Lord. And I think you need to hone in on that and you need to really take time to just sit and speak to the Lord, um, to, to pray with him, even to get angry with him. Uh, the only time I could really find solitude in my house is either here in the office in the morning when I'm watching videos and I listen to what they say and then I talk to the Lord about it or I, I literally, when I take a shower, anytime that I have a shower is the only time I could speak to the Lord. To me, that's like my prayer closet. I just go in there and I start speaking to him on different things and sometimes I get angry. Sometimes I get loud and boisterous and start yelling and shouting and it's just like uh, he's, uh, and I, I know some people might find this a bit 
you know, heresy. <laughs> but uh, I think God's big enough to, to handle that. Um, I explained once to my congregation when I was there and we were doing Bible study, I, I think God laughs at us when we come to him in our anger. And I think maybe some people got offended when I said that, but I, I didn't mean it like he was, he was mocking us. I, I think when we for those of us who have children, or if those of you who are aunts and uncles, you have nieces and nephews, and you see how they act, and you see how children act, and everything to them is just serious when they get angry, but it's just, it's so, it's just, it's like of no relevance to us, you know, it's like we, we look at that, and we see how angry they are, and even though they're sincere in their anger, and feel justified to be angry about something, a lot of us as parents kind of laugh it off because it is silly, you know, and, and it's just like, we, we look at that and be like, this is not a big deal. You know, you need to just calm down and chill out and not take this so seriously. And I think the Lord looks to us or upon us in that manner as well, too, <clears throat> where to us, the things that are going on in this world and the situations we are having and the circumstances we are in, it's just like, it's almost, you can almost picture, you know, God looking at us as like little kids and we're just like, Wah! you know, just like really angry and pent up and I'm just going to hold my breath until it happens or, you know, is really angry about something or saddened about something. And just like he has a father's heart to us and looks upon us in that manner where uh, it's, uh, in one part almost comical but in uh, uh, another part where he wants to help us he wants to help us through that situation be like all right just tone it down a little bit let me help you let me help you with this situation or let's let's see what we can do about it all right let's let's kiss the boo-boo you know is pretty much how i see it a lot of the times and so there's a lot of times where you know i, I talk to the lord I pray with him and I speak to him, but then there's a lot of times where I'm also angry and I'm frustrated about certain things, you know, and I, I yell in the shower and I get really angered and frustrated. And then later on, while I'm driving in the car, I just think about it and just like, Lord, I'm sorry I was acting that way. It's like, yeah, I, I guess I am foolish in that attitude. And when I think about what I'm saying and how I'm going about it and how, you know, the creator of the universe, you know, is uh, who is also our, our father and our Lord. And it's just looking down on us and just almost kind of laughing you know, comically at our actions, but also taking the seriousness of everything that is happening today as well, too, um, where we shouldn't be bothered by it. Now, I'll leave it with this, um, and I'm kind of dragging it on, but there was one thing that I, I do want to mention, and that was from my monster mashing episode. I'm sorry, it was from the side notes, it was the prelude to episode 7, where I was discussing that dream that I had of like the demonic encounters in my dream and stuff, and uh, I, I battled them off. That wasn't the important part, at least to me. It was the part where I woke up, and I was laying in bed, and the fan was going, and I thought the girls were yelling, and I, but I was just laying there. Um, and I noticed it wasn't girls at all, but it was demonic, like screaming and yelling and just the hate they had for me because I wasn't tempted by the powers that they were trying to seduce me with in the dreams. And I overpowered you know, them all, you know, like through, through the word and through the power of Christ and stuff. But as they were screaming and yelling and just like, I mean, if you heard it in real life, it'd probably freak anyone out. But I had this calmness and sincerity over me and just this... I was so calm and so relaxed that that the screams were actually lulling me to sleep. And it got me thinking that in the Bible, when they were crossing the Sea of Galilee and that demonic storm came and they were banging around in the waves and like all the, all the disciples were freaked out and Jesus was sleeping, resting in that, I can't help but think every time I hear that story now, that's what he was feeling. That was the peace and the presence that he had over him where the storm was just not affecting him in any way, shape, or form. In fact, he was calmed by it, knowing that they couldn't do anything to him. They had no power over him. And I've never felt that way ever in my life before or after. And I hope I feel it again, because man, if we could do uh, some, like spiritual warfare with that mentality, Wow. I mean, if the glory falls on us and we have that peace over us, that is what he's going to endow us with. He just gave me a taste of it in that bed because I overcame, you know, I, I fought through that spiritual warfare. And I think he gave me a taste of what may be coming. 
because I, I, I just, I just laughed. I just laughed at it in bed. You know, I was just smiling. I, I couldn't chuckle too loud because I thought that I'd wake Liz, but I'm like, man, these guys have no power over me. You get like, you, not, you don't scare me in any way, shape or form. I, I'm like, I am oblivious to your screams. In fact, scream more because I'm going to fall asleep to it. But I knew that it still was demonic activity, so I had to, you know, banish him out and, you know, say, in the name of Jesus, go, and, st and stuff like that. And then, you know, the screaming dwindled down to nothing but the fan just going. It's the only thing I heard was in my room was a fan afterwards. But there was this peace. I, I just, I, I can't explain it. It's very, it was just... I don't want to say it was numbing, but it was just, it was so relaxing. It's just like, man, I can just go to sleep with these, with the world just burning around me and these demons just like losing their minds, screaming directly into my ear. It's like, I'm not even phased by it. Uh, so, and I think that's the peace and the security the Lord wants to have or wants us to have in him during these times where we're so stressed, we're so burnt out, we're so just like everything is in chaos around us. And we've, we've lost money and we've lost jobs and we've lost friends and the people that are dearest to us. And it's just like the Lord's just up there laughing and just be like, I got this here. Let's, let's make the boo-boo go away. And you know, these people, now he, that doesn't mean he doesn't take the seriousness of what the enemy is doing. Like, you know, it's like, oh, this, this is nothing. Again, he's not a grandfather in the sky that a good time be had by all. He is still a father. He's still a judge and righteous ruler. So don't think I'm downplaying what he's going to do to those who aren't safe. He's still the creator of the universe. But at the same time, we, we need to realize that his actions and his judgment do not fall on us because we are part of his family. He's going to treat us like family, look upon us as a mother would her little chicklings. <laughs> Chicklets? <laughs> Chicks. <laughs> Sorry. I need more coffee, man. I'm so not awake. It's like going on two in the afternoon. I had a long night. It was a long night of uh, little sleep. So, <clears throat> Sorry for my words. They just sort of roll out. But I think you get what I'm trying to say is that there, there is a sternness, there is a righteous rule, there is a, a judgment, and like there is a time coming where God is going to put his foot down, and he's going to, the line's already drawn, he's going to like stomp out the enemy for those he cares about, but that's the thing, it's for those he cares about, his children, the people who are in within his family that have come to him, that are, you know, underneath his wing, that are within his guidance and following and in agreement and declaring and decreeing and his prophets and his warriors. Um, he still sees them as his children and he acts accordingly to his children. Now, whether that's through stern love, sometimes it's through rebuking, sometimes it's through a good spanking, but he still does love us and treats us as a father would any of his children. So we need to look at God in that perspective as well, too. Not everything is stern and serious with the Lord constantly on a constant basis and sterile, you know, and styrofoam and like you're, you're eating a rice cake. You know, it's like, no, he wants us to have joy and, and pleasure out of life, but we need to also take action and do what he's calling us to do so we can enjoy life even more abundantly to what his will and perspective of this life should be. So um, I hope that's gotten you a little bit of nuggets on some of the things that I've been uh, seeing and envisioning. And there's, there's more. There's some very interesting stuff that I'll get into next week. I'm going to change the title around instead of moving into what other prophets say and i'll just do this a part one and a part two um and just continue where i left off because there's still a lot more and there's still a few more things that i haven't mentioned that i wanted to in this episode but i'll save it for next episode so turns out this was my longest one so far and i hope i didn't bore you too much but heavenly father thank you for this time together and thank you for our uh listening to to these words and visions that that you gave me uh, that i could express to other people and i hope it gave them some sort of inclination of of how you work at least in some of us and the words that you give to us and how we are supposed to look forward to your time this turning around season this last harvest season that you're building up for us to deplete the enemy this luciferian agenda that hopefully we will never see again the restoration of all things including the prosperity to ourselves and the unification of the bride as one into a life of just joy and a kingdom age of just immaculate proportions so i'm looking forward to it and i hope others are as well and um Lord Jesus, come soon, man, because <laughs> for us, it's not soon enough, but I know it's in your timing, Lord, and we need to be patient and wait upon that. So 
uh, that is it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So that's it for me. I'm going to see if I can go and take another nap. I know I had to get up and do this to get it out and edit it in time for you guys. So, um, yeah, hopefully it should be out today now. I think I have enough time to edit it before the girls come home. So you guys have a wonderful weekend. Uh, stay blessed in the Lord. I love you all and talk to you later. Bye.